Hello and welcome to the Game of Thrones Companion Podcast presented by The Disorderly. Please head over to thedisorderly.com for the best in sports and entertainment. You can find us on Twitter at Disorderly Media, Facebook at Disorderly ENT, and you can find me on Twitter at Nick Risner, N-I-C-K-R-I-Z-N-E-R. <sighs> this isn't going to be a good one, guys, and I'm sorry for that, but uh, I was just so let down by this finale, and it hurts twice as bad because uh, I spent the majority of the season sort of defending the show. Now, there were certain parts that didn't work well. <clears throat> You're on Greyjoy, but... For the most part, I feel like a, a lot of the criticism was undeserved. Just sort of angry internet people being angry at a popular thing. You know, there, there was suddenly this narrative that the Double Ds were awful at their job and they're terrible writers and they're ruining the story, uh, you know, once it departed from George R. R. Martin's original text. And that's kind of bullshit, right? Because Cersei exploding the Sept was arguably the best scene of the entire show, and that wasn't from the books. That was a Double D decision. Right, So I went into this finale relatively optimistic, and that optimism was uh, only reinforced sort of by the way this episode started. I mean, it was fucking beautiful in a dark sort of post-apocalyptic type of way, but it, it was, you know? I don't know. All right, let's start with the pacing. Opening with, with Tyrion sort of slowly walking down uh, the streets of the smoldering city as dead children sort of lie on the ground and, and burnt and, and broken men struggle to, to process what the fuck just happened. And then cut to, to Grey Worm executing Lannister soldiers in the midst of the destruction. Lannister soldiers, who, by the way, were, were so covered in ash from the, the fires that you could barely see the red in their uniforms, making it all the more effective that these are just men. You know, they're not so different from the men of the North or any of the other quote unquote good guys from the show. It was effective. It was very effective. You know, it really was. Even the scene with Tyrion. Uh, where he goes into the Red Keep to find his brother and sister dead under the rubble. On one hand, I was kind of surprised by how not destroyed the Red Keep was. I mean, the story I was told last episode was that the whole thing sort of fell on top of Jaime and Cersei, and yet it was mostly still standing. And somehow, by the way, only one layer of bricks had, had landed on them. But whatever, I'm willing to ignore that because it created for a powerful moment where Tyrion truly loses it at the sight of his dead siblings. Uh, I bought it, man. I, I was affected by that, too. And finally, and perhaps most impressively, the moment where we finally see Daenerys post-battle. I mean, she just did the most horrible thing that anyone has ever done in this entire show. How do you portray a character like that after the horrible act? Is she foaming at the mouth? Does she have horns sticking out of her head? I mean, how, how can you justify such an evil action? And I was happy to see that they tackled it with, with almost like ambiguity. You know, they showed Danny having a very... Hitler-esque speech, for lack of a better term, uh, on, on top of a giant staircase. You know, the the flag, the dragon on the wall, the visuals of her walking out with the dragon wings behind her was insanely chilling. The dichotomy of the wild Dothraki sort of celebrating, you know, with screams and hoops and hollers, and the stillness of the Unsullied right in front of them, the, the uneasiness of Jon Snow and Tyrion standing by her side. It was at this moment, this is, this is the moment for me where I felt sure that I was right about this season. I was like, this is it. They're going to kill this finale, and, and this show will end as strongly as it started. And, and I, I felt like I was vindicated. I was right about this, you know? <sighs> I, I mean, I don't know. I was literally hurt by this episode. It hurt my feelings. I know this irrational. And if I'm being fully honest, when I rewatched it, it wasn't as bad as I remember in the initial reaction. I think just my disappointment from the finale really doubled everything. So when I rewatched it, knowing how everything ends, there was true value in a lot of these scenes. And. and you know, some of the scenes were rough, and I'll get to them, but I, I don't know. I guess it wasn't as bad as I my gut reaction was. You know, I'll say that. I don't know, but if it's irrational or not, that's how I felt, you know, because I was so invested, and I'm so on board with the show until the very end. You know, I really did defend it while the internet continued to shit in it right up to the last episode. I was, I was defending it, uh, and just to have that all thrown away, it, I don't know, man. It, it like, <laughs> it hurt my feelings. I don't. I know that sounds stupid. Like, they're not writing the show for me, but I think a lot of people kind of feel that way, and, and it sucks. You know, even Jon Snow killing Danny, that worked for me. You know, a little rush perhaps, but it did make sense. Jon had, had, had just witnessed all the destruction firsthand, right, during the battle. Uh, if you want to call it a battle, more like a, a slaughter. Arya warned Jon that Danny would likely try to kill both him and Sansa. And then Tyrion gives a, a long speech about how it's really the only solution, how she liberated the people of Slaver's Bay and she liberated the people of King's Landing and how she'll go on liberating people until she rules them all. Very well written line, by the way. Uh, so it makes sense that John would do it. Tyrion even goes as far as doubling down on what Arya said, only in a more subtle way because that's sort of his way of handling business. You know, I actually wrote down that piece of his monologue because it was it was great. He said, When she murdered the slavers of Astapor, I'm sure no one but the slavers complained. After all, they were evil men. 
when she crucified hundreds of Maronese nobles who could argue they were evil men. The Dothraki calls she burned alive, they would have done worse to her. Everywhere she goes, evil men die and we cheer her for it. And she grows more powerful and more sure that she is good and right. She believes her destiny is to build a better world for everyone. If you believe that, if you truly believed it, wouldn't you kill whoever stood between you and paradise? Which I believe alludes to, to the danger that both John and Sansa are in. And as far as the actual assassination, I liked how they did that as well. You know, I, I mean, first we see Danny's vision from the house of the undying realized, you know, she's walking towards the Iron Throne as the, as the snow falls from the sky, but never actually gets there. Unlike the vision, by the way, she actually does reach out and touch the Iron Throne, which is a little bit further than she made it before. Yet, when she turns around to finally sit in the throne and fulfill her perceived destiny, she is stopped by the sight of Jon Snow entering the room. And it's here where we get to see Danny's explanation, and it wasn't entirely without merit. Yes, she was delusional about what happened at King's Landing and the details of it, what was currently happening with the executions and all that, but she wasn't completely unhinged. You know, it was a mad queen, yes, but it was a very subtle portrayal of one, and I loved that choice. And that's when it all went to shit. That was the moment. That's that's right there, the rest of the episode shit. And that's very upsetting to me. Um and I'll be fair about it. There are pieces that worked with the end as well. But like this is the moment where it's such a pivot from a great finale to I just hated the rest of it. And maybe people don't agree or they feel opposite. I don't know. But let's get to it. So Drogon somehow forgives Jon for killing his mom. That seems very unlikely. Then he burns down the Iron Throne, which is extremely corny. You know, corny as hell. Like I understand the symbolism of him blaming the the Iron Throne and its, its lore. Uh, for the death of Danny, very Lord of the Rings esque, rather than you know Jon Snow, who had no other choice. The actual thing that killed uh, Frodo was the ring, you know. But it was still so cheesy, man. It was cheesy. The the slow motion melting of the Iron Throne and all that stuff it was cheesy. Then uh, Drogon flies her away to some place we never find out where. Some some place in the east, apparently. We we find out at the end of the episode, whatever that means. Uh, then a shitload of time passes with no explanation. Like like all of a sudden, fucking Tyrion, who was a prisoner the last time we saw him, is getting led to the small council of people who we haven't seen since last episode, if not longer, save for Arya and Dav- Davos. And, and it's no longer winter. Everything's bright and sunny. We actually find out later that a few weeks had passed because Tyrion says as much, but uh, I don't know, man. It's explained to us that, that Jon Snow was taken prisoner along with Tyrion following the death of Danny, and Grey Worm is, is currently in charge of the city. There's just a lot of things that were being told to us through through narration as opposed to uh, uh, you know showing us or, or spreading this thing out a little, a little more, you know? And presumably, uh, because he was named Master of, the, of War right before Danny's death, that's why Grey Worm is in charge of all this. But I don't buy that either. Isn't it more likely that, that Grey Worm would have executed John and most likely Tyrion for killing his queen? Like, he's a vengeful, violent person. We saw that with his reaction um, you know, to, to, to burning down King's Landing. So it seems like he would have just killed John right away. He wouldn't have kept him as a prisoner, but John's main character, and that wouldn't be a satisfying conclusion and whatever other bullshit they want to use to justify this. And that's not even the worst part of it. The worst part is the change in tone. Like, we went from one of the darkest and most fucked up starts to the finale and, and suddenly start peppering the episode with these silly jokes. Like, I don't understand why they would do that. It made the episode feel hokey and disjointed, which is not the tone you want for a finale. Like, Ed, Ed, Ed Mir- Mir- whatever his goddamn name is, Tully, uh, Catelyn's brother. He gets laughed at for trying to, to talk. I don't even know why he was in that scene, but that was a, a sort of hack joke. And then Sam gets laughed at for pitching democracy. But it's all done in this very slapstick kind of way. And then the final decision is that Tyrion, who literally just explained that everyone hates him. Both sides hate him. He make a terrible hand for that reason, uh, or terrible king, rather, for that reason. Somehow he's able to persuade all these powerful people who are at ends with each other that Bran should be king, even though Bran has said multiple times that he doesn't want to rule. And then yet suddenly he he drops a, a quick little one-liner about, why do you think I came all this way? I have no idea, Bran. No one knows. They never explain why you did half the shit in this season, why you did half the shit in the series. Uh, you know, Why did you turn into Ravens and then chill the whole Battle of Winterfell? It, it's stupid. The whole thing with Bran is stupid, and the fact that he's king is just stupid. But even it, all right. So I might be getting, I might be losing my cool because I don't like the character brand. I do understand with him being the three out Raven and him understanding the past and all this and everything that's ever happened that he would make good decisions because hopefully history doesn't repeat itself or whatever, right? I, I think that's probably the message here. You know what I mean? But also, 
to go back to the negative, I don't understand the point of, of making the North independent other than the fact that they, they had preached about an independent North the whole series. Like, if Bran is this super peaceful king that will know all of humanity's past and, and, and finally rule a just land, then why on earth wouldn't Sansa want to join up with that? It undermines the entire moment just for a cheap scene where Sansa is named Queen of the North. So, so she also sort of wins, I guess, and people like Sansa. It was fan service. I, I, it didn't fit the the rest of the scene or the you know the chosen ending that Bran is the rightful king because if he's the rightful king, why would the North want to be independent? It doesn't make any sense, you know. And then I think the bald move guys pointed this out on their their instant take, but uh, Bran the Broken is a shitty nickname for him. Like it's just mean. It's just mean. But that's that's just a minor point. It just seems like a terrible nickname for like the. You know, quote unquote, greatest character in the whole series, right? He's the rightful person. He has the best story. And they call him Brand the Broken. Seems mean. Um, anyway, back to the plot, I guess. So the fate of Jon Snow uh, made a little more sense, right? Grey Worm wanted to execute him, but he views the Night's Watch as a life sentence, more or less. So kind of the same thing. Sansa and Arya aren't thrilled, but at least Jon's not dead. So they're, you know, okay with it too. Uh, so it was a compromise. It was a compromise that made the most sense. But even in this scene with, with Jon and Tyrion talking to each other, there was ambiguity with whether the right choice was made. Tyrion even says, ask me again in 10 years. Like, perhaps Bran could turn evil. I would love that, by the way. What if the wrong decision was made? I mean, Tyrion was on a bit of a losing streak with strategies there, right? Let's not forget that. Then, of course, Grey Worm uh, you know, would never really truly fully forgive Jon for killing Danny. So that would always be sort of a looming threat as well. It's like they're setting up for a sequel, but I don't expect we'll ever get one. But you know, there is fodder there for a sequel if they wanted to do that. And then there's more fan service with Brienne finishing Jamie's entry in the Book of the Knights. Everyone kind of saw that coming. And then Bronn is somehow seated at Brienne's small council. Uh, another slapstick little joke when Tyrion straightens all the chairs just to have everyone else mess him up again. You know, and then there's a bit with, with uh, you know, naming the book The Song of Ice and Fire, which I alluded to a few episodes ago. And unless it went straight over my head, by the way, a pure nonsensical joke about how Tyrion was not mentioned in the book. Perhaps a nod to the fact that you know he was George R. R. Martin's favorite character the whole time. Then, then the whole thing sort of fades out with a uh, you know some mutual trash talk as the camera pulls out from the conversation. Also, the the Barstool Game of Thrones podcast aptly pointed out that this scene is almost identical to Seinfeld's finale, which just so happens to be one of the most notoriously terrible finales in television history. So maybe don't uh, follow their lead when it comes to ending a series that everyone loves. I don't know, man. You, you know, the, the final montage shows John and Arya getting their weapons ready and, and embarking on their separate journeys. John's riding north of the wall with the Wild Wings to become a free man. Arya's heading west of Westeros on some sort of, I don't know, Christopher Columbus adventure. And Sansa is shown as the head of Winterfell, the Queen of the North, the one independent kingdom of Westeros. The whole thing, it was just corny. It was just corny. I was i was looking for more of a bittersweet ending. I feel like that's what they promised us. And the whole thing was just corny. The hero wins. And I can't, I just can't get into that, man. I, I'm sorry. I don't know if that makes me a, a an asshole. I just can't get into the hero wins. Like, I, I'd rather have more of a melancholy finish. And I think that Game of Thrones kind of led us to believe that that's where we're going to get. But anyway, back to the, the, the super happy thoughts. Of course, John gets to pet Ghost which was more bullshit fan service. Everyone complained about how John didn't pet ghosts, and you know, sure enough, he does in the finale. And there you have it, the end of Game of Thrones. You know, A happy ending after all the foreshadowing that there were no happy endings in Thrones. And perhaps that's why I'm disappointed. I don't know. After all the death and destruction, there seemed to be a, a serious lack of death and destruction in this final season. Not that we didn't get our fair share, but uh, you know, a lot of the main characters made it out unharmed, and that didn't really feel right it felt unlike the game of thrones that we all have known and loved throughout this past decade uh so i guess it wasn't terrible it wasn't the best and, and you know all in all i'd argue that this is one of the greatest shows of all time with a somewhat underwhelming finale not terrible people comparing it to dexter i won't get into spoilers in case you want to watch that but dexter is the worst finale of all time didn't even make any sense um this wasn't that this wasn't this wasn't the worst finale i've ever seen in my life but it, it i don't know I don't know, man. I think I think the legacy of the show is going to be a, a really shit on final season. I think some of that's unfair. I think that people, uh, you know, not like how it ended. I, I do think those criticisms are uh, criticisms are fair. You know, that's how I feel about it. But I don't know, man. You know what? Let me leave you with this final thought because because the show almost teed it up for us. What if there was another ending? What if we got 
to the scene where John and Tyrion are talking, where John says, uh, you know, that Sansa doesn't get to choose who her queen is, and Tyrion says, no, but you do, and you have to choose now, you know, right before John goes off to see Danny. What if we went back to this moment and John made the opposite decision? You know, I want a, an alternate ending. I want a new episode to continue from there where we see John make this other decision where he hears Danny's speech and, and, you know, actually follows through with serving her. I mean, can you imagine? Give me that story. Give me the dark ending. It's not even dark. It, it, it's more, uh, not to keep using this word, but ambiguous. You know, it could, it could go either way. It's, it's up to interpretation. You know, his loyalty finally puts him in the, a position of ultimate conflict. He, he's pledged his heart and his sword to Daenerys, and, and she can't you know, stand for Sansa and Arya being against her. So she defeats both of them in battle. She kills both of Jon's sisters, leaving Jon with nothing but his blind faith in his queen. You know, and after all that death and destruction, after all of Danny's enemies are defeated, uh, she does what she basically said she was going to do all along and rules a, a land free of tyranny. It was all a means to... You know, the most perfect end where the people of the kingdoms have a voice and not the rich, not just the rich and the powerful. Uh, I mean, we see this play out sort of in the scene where they elected Bran, right? They laughed at the idea of a democracy while I believe Danny would have embraced it. And, and through the power of her dragons, Danny's able to basically enforce this fair and just society. A true paradise, unlike anything Westeros has ever seen. You know, and, and John is left with the weight of all the aforementioned death and destruction is left struggling to decide if it was all worth it. That's the ending I want. But I'm just, I'm spitballing here. I, you know, what do I know? I'm not a famous writer. Uh, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoy next week's documentary and try not to think about the fact that HBO was offered, uh, or they offered Thrones rather 10 episodes and they decided to limit it to six instead, despite the fact that the whole season felt very rushed. And with that, I will leave you guys. Um, God. All right. All right. Take care, guys. I got I to gotta go. I got to go. Peace.